Hello, crafters. This is Yana Smakula for SimonSaysTM.com. Welcome back for another Yeepy for Yana video. Today, I have two mini slimline foiled birthday cards to share. One showcases foiling on acetate, and another card with an identical design features foiling on a specific type of cardstock to get the best, most smooth, and ideal foiled results. We're going to start by foiling on acetate. It is crucial to pick the right kind of acetate, the one that is resistant to heat. If you've ever done heat embossing on acetate, you know that acetate, unlike paper, can warp significantly and can even melt from the heat applied using the heat tool when melting the embossing powder. When you want to hot foil on your acetate, you also need to pick the right kind of acetate for the job. The kind of acetate that can withstand the heat from the Glimmer hot foil system or another hot foil system and remain perfectly flat afterwards. Simon Says Stamp has the hot off the press heat resistant acetate in the store for you to try this technique with. Or you can try using any other heat resistant acetate you might already have in your stash. I started to work on my clear card by creating a card base from a sheet of heat resistant acetate. I'm making a mini slimline card, so the card size I need to make is three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches. I used my scoring tool and my scoring board to score a sheet of acetate at three and a quarter inches. I folded it, increased the score line, and next used my paper trimmer to trim the card base to size. I'm quite into the mini slimline trend these days, hence why I picked this particular card size for my projects today. To create my birthday card, I'm going to use a new glimmer plate from Spellbinders. This is a birthday candle background plate from my latest Blooming Birthday collection. And I'm going to foil this in the center of my clear card base. Now, this background plate was originally designed as a half background to create a full card background for an A2 card. So if you were to make an A2 card, one that measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches, you would foil this background twice and it would give you a full card background. The mini slimline card has a slightly different proportion and I have found that you can use this background plate to foil a partial background that fits nearly perfect on the mini slimline card. It's quite a coincidence, but when I foil this background, you'll see how perfectly well it fits on this particular card size. I'm using my hinge method to position and secure this background plate on my card base. And what the hinge method is, you basically take a piece of low tech tape. This is Spellbinder's best craft tape ever, but you can use any washi tape or any other low tech tape in your stash. I'm using it to create a hinge and attach the glimmer plate onto my background. Next, I've already cut a piece of foil to size. The foil color I'm using today is polished brass, but you can use any other foil color you like. And I'm just sliding that piece of foil under my glimmer plate and then using another piece of low tech tape to secure the plate and the foil on the other side of my background or of my card base. Next, I already have my Glimmer hot foil system hot and ready to go. I had it off to the side on another desk. I had it on for a couple of minutes, so the second light has already turned green, and that means that I can begin my foiling process. Now, because I have a card base here, I need to make sure I open the card base so that I don't have too much pressure and so that I don't have any weird transfer or indentations or embossing onto the back of my card base. So it is best to open the card and then place it onto your background to make sure you only foil on the front of the card. Obviously you're not going to foil on the back as well, but if you place the card base closed, you can end up having too much pressure in the machine. So I've opened my card base, I've added my shims on top, and you can see here that my card base goes slightly outside the edge of the Glimmer platform. That means I can't really use this in my Platinum 6 die cutting machine because the edges are a little bit too wide. Remember, our card base is three and a quarter, so then when you open the card, it's actually six and a half inches. That's a little bit too big for the six inch wide die cutting machine. 
So the way around it is to use a larger die cutting machine if you have one on hand. I also have a platinum, a regular platinum die cutting machine. So that's what I'm going to use with my glimmer to foil this background. Now, I also wanted to share a quick trick with you to help you label your foils. When I receive my foil and the Spellbinders foil comes in these cardstock containers, the name of the foil is printed on the back right to the barcode. So what I like to do is I like to cut that out with my scissors. I then like to add a piece of strong double-sided tape and then I just stick that on the inside of my foil roll. This helps me to identify the foil to make sure I know which color foil I'm using exactly because sometimes some foil colors are very similar and it's quite hard to tell them apart. For example, here I have the matte gold foil. I can tell that apart from the other colors, but these two colors that I have, they're very similar and it's not always easy to tell what the color is, but having that barcode and name adhered on the inside of the tube makes it very easy to identify the foil color. So I pressed the timer button and I allowed my Glimmer hot foil plate to get nice and hot. I'm going to bring my platinum original die cutting machine. So this particular machine has eight and a half inch opening. I'm going to zoom out a bit so that everything fits in my camera frame. And we're going to wait for that light to stop flashing. And that will tell us when our plate is good and ready to go. The light flashes for about one minute. And during that minute, the heat transfers onto the glimmer plate. And that is what allows the foil transfer to happen. The light has stopped flashing. I'm going to take my glimmer platform out of the docking station, take the docking station out of the way. My work area is quite small, so I have to maneuver things around. And having that done, I can slowly send the sandwich through my platinum die cutting machine and foil. I like to send it forward and back just to make sure that I have enough pressure. You actually, when you foil an acetate, I have found that it's actually enough to send it just one way. There's no need to send it forward and back. Okay, let's take a look at our foil results. Be careful because the glimmer plate is quite hot. And look at that, it foiled very nicely. I do have a little bit of overfoiling at the top there. It's more of a halo effect where the plate has bounced off the background in hit it in another spot, like a little double foiling, but that can be easily removed using a pencil or a sanding eraser. While I have my Glimmer hot foil system on my desk, I'm also going to foil a couple of other elements for my projects. So I need the sentiments. Now to foil the sentiments, I am using my Yana's special sentiments Glimmer set. I'm going to foil one that reads you are a wonderful friend, happy birthday. And then I will also later foil one that says, make a wish, I hope it comes true. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a specific type of cardstock to get the best, most smooth and ideal foil results. When you foil on paper, paper matters a great deal. Paper is actually the most important thing when it comes to foiling and picking the right kind of paper, the right kind of cardstock will give you the best possible results. I have found that Simon's 130 pound cardstock, the smooth white cardstock works perfectly well for hot foiling. It's a really great cardstock for stamping and ink blending and other things like that, but is also phenomenal when it comes to hot foiling. Here I have foiled my sentiments. You can see the perfect results. I will later foil the birthday candle background and you will see how well that foils on this type of paper as well. So if you are struggling with hot foiling, if you find that the paper you're using doesn't give you the best results, I encourage you to try Simon's 130 or even the 120 pound cardstock for hot foiling. I promise you guys, it will be a game changer. Now, the idea for the birthday cards I'm making today is to have that beautiful candle background, have a foiled sentiment and have pretty flowers because, you know, we all love to have flowers on our birthdays, right? I really like the new Simon Says stamp, Blooming Meadow stamp set, and I have recently used it to make this card. I thought I would use the same stamp set and create similar looking flowers to use for my birthday cards. 
There's one trick that I like to use when stamping solid floral images like these. I like to add shading to these solid images using my ink pads. I already have another video on my YouTube channel showing how to add shading to these using dye inks, but for today's video, I thought I would use Distress Oxide inks. I recently got a couple of new colors to add to my stash. I don't have a very large stash of oxide inks. I'm actually fairly new to Distress inks. So I thought I would use these type of inks to stamp these florals and add interest and shading. So I picked a couple of colors to stamp flowers in pink, and yellow, and then I will also use the green ink to stamp the leaves. Now the colors I'm using are Spun Sugar and Picked Raspberry for the pink flowers, Squeeze Lemonade, Mustard Seed, and Wild Honey for the yellow flowers, and then Twisted Citron, Distress Oxide, and Simon Says Stamp Green Leaf Dye Ink to stamp the leaves. The idea here is to ink the entire flower or the entire image the entire solid layer using your lightest color of ink. Then to add interest in detail, use the slightly darker ink color, angle the ink pad and ink just a portion of that stamp to create some shading on one side of the flower. So just like that, it's very easy to do. All you need to do is angle the ink pad. And if you feel you've added too much ink, you can use your finger or maybe a cloth to wipe that excess ink off. And you've instantly added some interest to an otherwise one layer flower. I kept on stamping the images. I wasn't quite sure how many I needed. So I think I stamped a couple of extras. And then with all of the background stamping done, I used the outline layer and stamped that in black, creating a little bit of an offset. The outline layer isn't designed to go on top of the solid layer perfectly. So if you offset it a little bit, if you give it a little bit of an imperfection, it actually looks even better than if you try and align it perfectly. So at least that's, that's what I like and that's what I think works best for me. I finished stamping all of the flowers and all of the leaves and then I used the coordinating dies and cut all of these images out in my die cutting machine. I wanted to add the sentiment slightly off to the right hand side. So here I have my you are a wonderful friend sentiment. I'm going to place it slightly towards the right hand side of the card. And then I'm going to add happy birthday. And I'll try to center it across the bottom row of the candles. Now I'm using a clear block and then my uh, pencil eraser at the top there to basically hold my card base in place. The clear card base, the clear acetate tends to pop open all the time. So I didn't want to use any adhesive to adhere the card shut. So I just placed a clear acetate and then that pencil eraser at the top there and at the bottom to help the card base stay closed while I'm working on my floral arrangement. The idea is to add a couple of flowers from behind the sentiment to create a little floral arrangement for this card. With that done, I used foam adhesive and adhered all of the pieces in place. I quite like the way it looks. It's not two dimensional, but you do have a little bit of dimension added to your project. Now with the clear cards, there's always that question of where do you write the sentiment? How are you going to add a personal message to the card? And you can do that by adding another layer, a smaller cardstock layer inside your card. Here I die cut two circles. These are identical in size from white cardstock. And I'm going to adhere those circles onto the inside of my card. One is going to be adhered on the inside, just like so. And I'm placing it so that it's somewhere centered behind the flowers. And then the second circle is going to be adhered on the outside of my card, hiding the adhesive from that previous circle, because that's the trouble of using the clear card base. You can always see the adhesive on your card. So that's one way to add a panel to your card so that you have a place to write a personalized message. Now you can also use another circle and adhere that behind the florals to hide that adhesive. That's another way to do it. And I did try that. You can see me adding that circle to the card base now. So I basically die cut three circles and adhered each onto each side of my clear acetate card. So there, there we go. That's what it looks like. And it's actually quite an easy solution to create a place for a personalized message. What you can also do is you can die cut identical shapes 
the same shapes that you're using on the front of the card and then use those and adhere those from the back or from the inside of the card to hide any adhesive. I ended up doing this for my card as I just didn't like having that much white cardstock on this clear card. So I went with the die cut shapes on the inside. I actually ended up removing the clear die cut circles. I felt like I didn't like them there. I wanted my clear card to be, well, nearly clear. And when I decide to give this card to somebody, I'm just going to include a white cardstock panel for my personalized message, but the cardstock panel is not going to be adhered to the card. I'm just going to put it inside the card and then the recipient can remove it and keep it separate or keep it in the envelope that the card comes in. I also added a little strip of cardstock behind that sub sentiment to hide the adhesive on that as well. So this is what this card looks like now. It pairs perfectly well with Simon's new mini slimline envelopes. And you can go with either a yellow or a pink envelope or a white envelope if you like. I actually like the white envelope the most for this card. And because we made it a quarter inch smaller, the card can easily be inserted into the envelope and mailed. Super easy and super fun. I mean, a little bit tricky since it's clear acetate and it's a little bit difficult to work with, but overall, I think it's quite fun. Now to create my second card, I went ahead and I used the same Simon Says Stamp 130 pound cardstock, the white, the smooth cardstock. It's actually very high quality cardstock and I love it for foiling. This type of cardstock always gives me the best results no matter what kind of glimmer plate I'm using on it because sometimes when you foil the larger background plates the larger glimmer plates you might have imperfect foiled results I always have the best results with this particular type of cardstock things foil just perfectly and I'm always happy. I never, I never waste any paper, which is really important because this is high quality cardstock. I don't want to waste any of it. So this paper always gives me fantastic results. So here's one of the panels that I foiled. This was foiled in a different color foil. This is champagne. And then I foiled another panel in that same polished brass. And you can see these two side by side and you can see how well the foiling turned out. Now to create my second card, like I said, it's going to be an identical design, but the foiling is done on paper versus acetate. So I foiled Make-A-Wish sentiment and I foiled another sub sentiment that reads, I hope it will come true. I cut all of these out using the coordinating dies and now I'm just going to foam mount my foiled candle background onto a card base. So I already created a card base and this measures three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches, a mini slim line. And I used Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock to create this card base. And I just foam mounted my foiled candle background on top. Next, I'm using foam adhesive squares to create a floral arrangement for this card. And the idea here is the same. I want to make a floral cluster and then pop my sentiment on top of it. So I'm just playing around with different type florals and with the floral arrangement. And once I'm happy, I'm going to adhere all of these down using the foam adhesive squares to add a little bit of dimension to this card because I always like to add some sort of dimension to my projects. Now, I also have these color essential gems from Spa Binders and I decided I wanted to add just a couple of gems to my cards here and there. I wanted to scatter them on the background to embellish both of the cards a little bit. Now these gems are quite nice. They're actually glass, so not plastic. So very nice high quality gems and embellishments for your card. Here I'm using my Spellbinders tool in one to pick up the gems and position them on the background. And I'm just adding a couple of gems here and there, scattering them on the background. And here's a look at the finished projects created with the new Simon Says Stamp Blooming Meadow Stamp Set and Birthday Candle Glimmer Background Plate. Well, that's it for me for today. I hope you found this video useful. If you make a card inspired by this video, we'd love it if you shared your project online and tagged us on social media. We always enjoy seeing what you make. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet done so. Thanks so much for joining me today. Love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.